A wise person once told me, dreams don't work unless you do. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure. Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. What would your future be like if you decided to, to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears, that you experience the fear, as the one book says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Life is 10% what happens to you, is 90% what you do about it. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life, you can take the lid off of your job. And, and if, if, if you're wondering if you still have the lid on in your life, here are some clues that's gonna let you know that the lid is still on. If you're not excited about waking up in the morning, if you're sitting around bored out of your mind, if you got time to do everything anybody asks you to do, you probably got the lid on. <laughs> if when you tell your dreams to all your friends, it makes sense to them, you got your lid on, man. Your dreams should be, should not make sense to everybody. You gotta say something that make people go, how you gonna do that? That's when you got the lid off. And if I were you, I'd do that. I'd take the lid off. Makes sense to me, don't it? They're always gonna get ready to get set to get going. What we've gotta do is, boom, just like that, move into action. Every time you remember your dream, you're removing some dirt. You're digging it back out. The true mark of a champion is even though some dirt gets thrown on your dream, instead of letting it get buried, you keep shaking it off. You keep moving forward. You keep looking for a new opportunity. You wouldn't be having that opposition if you didn't have something great in you. If your dream wasn't alive and on track, right on schedule to come to pass, you wouldn't have so many things coming against you. That dream is still alive. You may have tried a year ago, five years ago or 40 years ago. Didn't work out. Nobody was there to help you. Go back and try again. This is your time. This is your moment. Your destiny is calling out to you. Can I tell you, your dream is not dead. It's just not in season. Your time is coming. Promotion is coming. Good breaks are coming. Promises you've been standing on. Dreams you've been praying about. Lack is not your destiny. Constantly struggling, barely getting by is not the end of your story. These light afflictions are for a moment. The adversity is temporary. The glory is eternal. Lord, I believe this is my year to get healthy and whole. This is my year to meet the people of my dreams. This is my year to go further in my career to step into a new level of my destiny. This is my year to accomplish dreams, to break free from this depression. This is my year to meet the right people. This is my year to get healthy and whole. This is your year to see double. This is your year for vindication, for restoration, for new beginnings. Now get your mind going in the right direction. Here's the secret. The people that do the most with their lives, the people that seem the most self-assured, the ones that seem to embody confidence, the ones that seem to define confidence, they're the ones that had to face down the most fear. They simply didn't linger in it. Don't hate your competitors. Respect your competitors. Learn from him. 
had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, i got to think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. So I turned 25 10 years later. That same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. I said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero is always 10 years away. I'm never going to be a hero. I'm not going to attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. That's the thing. Success and failure are generally slow processes. Either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Choose love and don't ever let fear turn you against your playful heart. I believe in uh, manifestation. I believe in uh, putting a rocket of desire out into the universe and, and you get it when you believe it. You get it when you believe you have it. And that's the key. Is and we want to get really sensitized, acutely sensitized, sensory acuity, to whether what we're doing is working or not. And by the way, sensory acuity is really the measure of a person's intelligence. What I mean by that is how do we measure intelligence? Intelligence is a measure of the number and quality of distinctions you have in a given situation. You can handle this, you just haven't figured it out yet. It's all right, this is your training period. This is the tuition you have to pay for what you don't know. You can do this, other people have done it. It doesn't take an Einstein. Get you some people that can teach you some stuff that you don't know. Get you some people that have done it successfully and learn from them. Take some seminars, workshops, read some books on how to manage a business. Change the way you see yourself and begin to tend to the personal details. Understand that nobody's going to take care of your business better than you. You will notice the most successful people in any field, they are usually the ones who have failed more than anybody else. You see the difference between a successful person and everyone else? It's not a lack of strength. It's not a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of will. You must experience what this life is totally, isn't it? Before you go, you must experience this. If you do experience that, then such questions will never arise in your mind because that's not the way existence is. It's up to you in a world where we're taught to look outside for answers, for a job that will make us happy, for money that will make us happy, that answer is within. We already have it. We already have the answer, but will we unleash it? Will we give it? Will we own it? Will we truly reinvent ourselves to become the people that we're capable of becoming? The bow too tightly strung is easily broken, says one of the Proverbs. Balance is a gorgeous thing. So, be monomaniacal in your execution around your high-value targets, your HVTs, your mission plan, but also build in some rewards. And that's going to send a gorgeous message to your conscious and your subconscious mind that, hey, this daily practice of execution around my deliverables is a beautiful thing. And you create this thing called momentum. And the monk who sold his Ferrari, I went back and I saw this recently, I think there's a whole chapter on momentum. And you become like this, I love skiing. You start off small, but as you go down the slope, you pick up momentum. A lot of people say, Robin, where do I start? I want to start a new business. I want to become a better artist. I want to find the love of my life. I want to be a world-class creative. I want to multiply my financial life. Where do I start? You just start. You just start. There's great power in the start. And when you start, life starts supporting you. Well, God wants us all to be courageous because he knows we'll face times in life and situations and circumstances that it takes more than just the desire, it takes courage. Many people operate on the basis of fear, 
on the basis of what other people think. We as believers should operate on the basis of courage. Courage to say no when we ought to say no. Courage to say yes when we should say yes. So what kind of courage do you have? Is yours sort of floating between depending on the situation? Or do you know the difference between right and wrong for your life? And you've made up your mind.